So we know how to use Browser Sync in combination with Webpack to refresh our page automatically whenever we make a change to one of our files over here. But we can take things one step further using what is known as Webpack Dev Server. So Webpack Dev Server is a Webpack add-on that basically does the same thing as Browser Sync to a degree, but it comes with a few extra features and it's also missing a few features that Browser Sync provides. So the features that Webpack Dev Server does provide is that it'll watch for changes within any of the front end files in our source directory. So if I were to make a change to the style.scss file, well, Webpack Dev Server would go ahead and reload the page automatically for us. Well, this does exactly what Browser Sync does. So what is the main benefit to using Webpack Dev Server? Well, Webpack Dev Server provides for something called hot module replacement. And what that means is that whenever we make a change to one of our files over here, let's say our background is going to be red, the page is updated automatically without actually refreshing the page. Essentially what's happening here is that we're uploading our file changes from memory instead of writing them to disk. And as a result, we're getting super quick updates over in our browser compared to the updates we would be getting if we were to refresh our page each and every time we made a change to one of these files. So Webpack Dev Server can update our browser automatically whenever we make a change to one of our CSS files, as you'll see right here. But it can also update automatically whenever we make a change to one of our JavaScript files. So let's go ahead and open up the console. And you'll see if I start to save this over here, let's go ahead and change some of this console log text. You'll see that the console log text is being outputted in the console. And if we change this, let's just say, I don't know, what is a good, what's a good word to put here? Webpack dev server, it's first thing that comes to mind. If we put some other kind of text here, such as webpack dev server, you'll see that it's updated automatically and we're not actually refreshing the page and clearing the console. So Webpack Dev Server provides for some really, really cool features in regards to development efficiency because we can update our page automatically without forcing us to wait for that page refresh, which can take up to seconds at a time, depending on how bulky our project is. And just to show you guys something more applicable in regards to how you can use this within a real world project, over here in this tab, you'll see that this is the chriscourses.com website on a development server. So if I were to go ahead and bring the project file on over here and start making updates to this, this is the canvas piece in the background real time. If I were to start making updates to this canvas piece, let's go ahead and change one of these mountains to red. You'll see that it's updated automatically without actually refreshing the page, which is really cool. This means we don't have to load all the code each and every time we make a change to this file over here. So this gives you a better idea of why we'd want to use something like this within our everyday projects. So let's go ahead and switch back on over to this project over here. So Webpack Dev Server provides for some pretty awesome features, but it also has some downsides. One of the downsides is it'll only manage whatever files are being pulled in through our Webpack Config's entry point. So you'll see that our entry point is global currently, which means Webpack is reading a global.js file and compiling it into whatever output we specify right here within our output object. So it's taking this file and it's outputting it into this global bundle. Webpack will only reload changes for anything being pulled into one of these entry point files. So that means if we were to make a change to index.html, and this HTML file is pulled from Laravel welcome page, it looks very nice, which is why I used it. If we were to make a change to this file over here, you'll see that Webpack Dev Server does not refresh your page automatically. And the same thing will go for PHP files and other backend files. Webpack Dev Server will not refresh the page if we were to make a change to one of those files. Yet, yeah, that is what Browser Sync is able to do. It'll watch for PHP files, it'll watch for HTML files, and it'll reload the page whenever we make a change to one of them. So the question is, which one do I use? Do I use Webpack Dev Server or do I use Webpack plus Browser Sync? The answer is, you're going to want to use both. So you can actually combine the two. You can actually combine Webpack Dev Server with Browser Sync so that Browser Sync will manage your backend files while Webpack Dev Server will manage your frontend files, providing for the option to use hot reloading in the process. So that is going to be the purpose of this tutorial. It's going to be a multi-part series. In this one, I'm going to show you guys how to get set up with just Webpack Dev Server. And in the next part, I'm going to show you guys how to integrate Browser Sync into this so that we can refresh our page whenever we make a change to not only our front-end files, but also our back-end files. So this is going to be awesome for your development workflow. It's going to save you a ton of time overall once you get this up and running and get a better idea of how to integrate this within your everyday app. So I highly recommend using it and let's get started. All right, to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is open up a new terminal window. I'm going to drag that on over here, and I'm going to cd into a directory which I like to do my web projects on, which is a directory called web. 
And then I'm going to clone a repo called cc-webpack-server. Basically, this is just a repo so you guys can follow along and learn how to use Webpack Dev Server. So I'm going to click this clone button right here, copy the URL, and I'm going to say git clone the URL, and then clone into a directory called webpack-dev-server like so. That's going to copy the contents into that directory. I'm going to cd into it. And then I'm going to open it up in my text editor of choice, which is Sublime Text. So looking at this project directory, you'll see that we have a few files. If we look in our index.html file, this is the same file we saw earlier opened up in the browser from Laravel. It just has that really nice text overlaid on it. We have some source files, global.js doesn't have anything in it at the moment, but it will eventually. Library.js has a little bit of code. Style.scss has a little bit of code. Get ignore file, we can ignore. Get ignore makes sense. And then our package.json file has a few packages that we're going to be using throughout the remainder of this tutorial. So to get started, we're going to actually install all of these by typing yarn or npm install. So I'm going to install this by using yarn because that is my package manager of choice. So if you were to install Webpack Dev Server into a current project and you don't have all these dev dependencies listed out like I do right now, well, to install Webpack and Webpack Dev Server, all you would do is say yarn add Webpack and then Webpack dash dev dash server and then finally a dash dash dev and that'll go ahead and add these two packages to your package.json file and allow you to use them within your project. So you'll see that these packages have finished downloading and now we can make use of them within this webpack.config.js file. So this contains a very simple webpack config. We're outputting an entry point of global.js into a file that's going to be called global.bundle.js. We're making use of a SAS loader and extract text webpack plugin so that we can have an external style sheet which we'll reference with an index.html. And that's really all there is to it. So if we go ahead and run webpack in the terminal, now that we downloaded those dependencies, we have a global.bundle.js file being generated for us. But you'll notice that we don't have an SCSS file being generated for us as of yet. And that is because we need to make sure that since Webpack is only watching this global entry point at the moment, we need to make sure that we're pulling in our CSS file through here. So we're going to say require style.scss. And once we do that, You'll see we're now generating a CSS file as well. So let's start off by pulling in these files we just generated into index.html. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of our file here. And right above our body tag, I'm going to create a new script. And it's going to reference global.bundle.js like so. And then I want to make sure I'm referencing our CSS up here. So I'm going to go to the top. And right beneath this Google Fonts link, I'm going to say create a new link that is referencing it's going to be CSS slash style not CSS. So now we can open this up in our browser. So to open this up in our browser, I'm going to cancel out of Webpack for the time being, and I'm going to type open dot, and that's going to open up a finder window for me within the current project directory. And you'll see within dist, I can double click our index.html file, and it's going to open up our project in the browser, perfect. So let's go ahead and get things reorganized here just so we can see everything on the screen. I'm going to exit out of Finder. Where is our terminal at? Hiding behind the browser. Typical. All right, so we have our file being read in the browser, but you may have noticed that our SCSS file has a background of green, but it's not being read in the browser. So let's go ahead and check our console. We'll look inside of, let's see what we can see here. We'll look in our head to make sure that's being pulled in. And okay, it is indeed being pulled in. That is good, but there's probably another style overriding the green. So let's go ahead and look in index.html and there is. So right inside the style tag here that Laravel provides by default, they're setting the background color to white. So let's go ahead and get rid of that for now. And we'll refresh the page. And now you can see the background is green, but we're going to set this to white because the green background just did not look too hot in my opinion or anyone's opinion. I don't know I speak for a lot of people, but I don't think it looks too great. So since we make a change to this file, we want to make sure that we're running Webpack again. And if we refresh, we're good to go. All right, so if we make a change to global.js, let's say we have a console log statement in here, and we have a string being consoled out into the browser console. You'll see that nothing is showing as of yet, and that's because we have to refresh the page manually since we're not making use of something like Webpack Dev Server or Browser Sync. 
So we want to make sure that we're making use of Webpack Dev Server to serve up our file instead of visiting it directly in the browser. So to do so, we're going to cancel out of Webpack and then we are going to run, let's head on over to package.json. We are going to run this script that we specified within package.json. You'll see if I type webpack dev server into the terminal, we're returned with the following error message command not found webpack dev server. And that is because webpack dev server is currently a local file. So, in order to get this to work, we are going to run it as an npm script by saying when we type npm start, run the following script as a result. So, we're going to say run webpack dev server and then open it up automatically in whatever browser we have opened. So once we do that, you'll see that it opens up automatically and we are returned with the contents of our project directory. But really we only wanna be returned with what's within our distribution directory because that's where our project output is currently living. So instead of automatically referencing our project's main directory, we wanna make sure that it's referencing just the distribution directory. So to do so, we're going to head on over to Webpack Config and we're going to add a new property called dev server. And this property is going to take care of all of the options we would like for our dev server to handle. So to change the default directory webpack dev server opens up, we are going to specify a content base. And this is going to be equal to, I'm just going to copy this code up here for our output because this code right here is referencing our distribution directory. I'm just going to copy that and say, when webpack dev server starts up, go to our current directory and then also go to a directory called dist. And with this in place, if we restart our Webpack server with npm start, going to open it up in the browser and you'll see we're automatically returned with the contents of our distribution directory. So that's a good start. Now that we have Webpack dev server up and running, you'll see our URL has changed up here. And if we edit our global.js file, let's go ahead and open up the console so we can see what's going on here. If we edit our global.js file and save it, the page is updated automatically, which is great. But at the same time, it's not being hot reloaded. You'll see each time I make a change to this file over here, the page is doing a full refresh, which is not exactly what we're looking for. So in order to fix this, we need to activate hot module reloading, which means we have to go back to Webpack config.js and do a little bit of extra configuration here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over to our dev server property, and I'm going to add a new property within it called hot, and this is going to be equal to true. So once we set that, we now need to also add a new plugin. And this plugin is going to be called the webpack.hot module replacement plugin. And it's just going to have some parentheses at the end of it. So if we save this and restart webpack, because each time we make a change to this webpack config file, we need to restart webpack manually. If we restart webpack dev server over here, and look inside of our console, you'll see that now we have the statement saying hot module replacement is enabled. So you're probably thinking now, if we go to global JS, now if we edit this, it has to be changed with hot module replacement. Now let's watch, let's watch what happens here. If I'm going to save this, well, it doesn't happen, which is unfortunate. You'd think it happens, but we, we do need to do a little more extra configuration, which can get kind of annoying, but that's why I'm here guys to help you out to prevent you guys from struggling with the same things that I did in regards to getting this set up. So the extra bit of configuration that we're going to need in here is we're going to need to add some code that indicates the Webpack to watch this file specifically for hot module replacement. So we want to say if hot module replacement is enabled, then do the following. We're going to say module.hot accept. And all this means is we're going to enable hot module replacement for global.js. So let's go ahead and save that. And now if we make a change to our console log statement over here, you'll see that it's being updated automatically in the console without actually refreshing the page and clearing everything inside of here. We can go ahead and keep changing it and our page is going to be updated automatically without that full page refresh. So. Now that we have that going for us, you'll see that we're returned with the console statement saying, consider using the name module plugin for module names. And that is referencing this little number right here. So Webpack is keeping track of which modules are being monitored by hot module replacement. And right now it's giving it an ID of 38 rather than the module name. So we're going to head back on over to webpackconfig.js and add one more plugin over here. And this plugin, we're going to copy this line right here for hot module replacement, just paste it beneath it. This plugin is going to be called 
the named modules plugin. Pretty simple. It just matches up with the plugin name right here. So once we add that in, we're going to restart Webpack with npm start. We're going to open up a new tab for us. Let's go ahead and check out the console. And now if we save our global.js, you'll see it's now referencing the exact module name rather than a random arbitrary ID. So we know how to use Webpack Dev Server with hot module reloading for JavaScript files, but let's get it working for our SCSS file as well. So if you're not making use of the Extract Text Webpack plugin, if you're not exporting your styles into a separate style sheet like so, you can just go ahead and require your style sheet in here, make edits to it, and it'll update automatically. So if I were to change this to blue without the Extract Text Webpack plugin and save it, well, our page would be updated automatically to a blue background. But since we are making use of the Extract Text Webpack plugin, this hot module replacement does not work by default you need to add a little bit of extra code to your global.js file in order to get this working. Wherever you're pulling in your SCSS file, you need to add this little snippet. So this is a snippet that I saw from a Git issue request, and it works quite well for updating your style.scss file on the fly. And I have included this in the description if you would like to go ahead and copy and paste this yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this snippet of code here. And basically the snippet of code is going to make sure that Webpack Dev Server also manages the style sheets that we're extracting into a separate file. So now if I go ahead and save this, you'll see now that we added that snippet of code, whenever we change our body's background, it's going to update automatically without a page refresh. And that is how you implement Webpack Dev Server with Extract Text Webpack plugins. You do need that extra little snippet of code because it's not a feature that's available by default within Webpack Core. So that's how you get started with Webpack Dev Server and hot reloading. But you'll notice if I make a change to index.html, let's just say I want to delete everything in here, anything outside of this entry point is not going to be managed automatically for us. So in order to get Webpack managing things such as backend files like PHP files or even HTML files, we need to integrate browser sync. So in the next episode, I'm going to show you guys how to integrate browser sync into this so we can get the best of both worlds. We can get browser sync refreshing our HTML and PHP and other backend files. And we can also get Webpack Dev Server hot reloading our page whenever we make a change to one of our front end files. So I hope you enjoyed everyone, and I look forward to seeing you in part two where we integrate browser sync.